Biochemical assays involve the quantification of specific biochemicals or the monitoring of specific biochemical reactions in a cell. The image here is of a mouse embryo in which the LAC-Z protein is produced in developing cells of the spinal cord. LAC-Z is one of the biochemical reactions that can be easily monitored using one of these assays. The compound XGAL will turn blue in its presence, allowing the staining of cells that express it. LAC-Z is one of the most commonly used biochemical assays. It has many variants and each differs by the type of instrumentation used for the measurement and the specific compound employed. In each case, the beta-galactosidase protein encoded by LAC-Z will hydrolyze galactose residues off the substrate. There are substrates that will turn blue, yellow, or black upon hydrolysis. There are also fluorogenic substrates that can be detected by cytometry, fluorimetry, or fluorescence microscopy after hydrolysis. If you just replace the galactose moiety with phosphate, all the same color-generating chemicals can be used to monitor alkaline phosphatase activity. Though the same diversity of substrate does not exist for beta-lactamase, a limited set of fluorogenic and chromogenic substrates, including nitrocephin, exist here too. These enzymatic reporter genes are often used in the same context as GFP and RFP. The measurements are often more precise and sensitive due to the amplification obtained from watching conversion of a substrate rather than the protein itself. For example, to get 100x over background signals from GFP and E. coli, you typically must express it from a high copy plasmid. However, genomically encoded LAXE can provide 10,000 fold signals over background. Many of these chromogenic and fluorogenic substrates are cell permeable, and there are additional chemical modifications that can render them cell permeable when they are not. Thus, you often can perform these assays directly on intact cells. Alternatively, they can be performed in a partial lysate of the cells. Different substrates are read out in different ways. For bulk absorbance measurements using a spectrophotometer, orthonitrophenol-based substrates are usually the best. For visual readout on colonies in a plate, the insoluble products XGAL and SGAL are best. For cytometers, fluorimeters, or microscopy, the fluorogenic substrates are required. Additionally, there are substrates for these enzymes that change electrochemical properties upon hydrolysis, allowing detection with electrodes. I highlight the enzymatic assays because they are commonly used and there are many of them. There are assays for monitoring MAP kinases, for monitoring calcium concentrations, for watching protein-protein interactions, amongst many other things. Another type of biochemical assay involves stains. Stains specifically label some biochemical species of a cell or are used as a probe of permeability or the chemical environment of a cell. That could include pH detection or calcium detection and so forth. You can stain things on the surface of the bacterium, such as displayed epitopes and surface proteins with conjugated antibodies. These are reagents constructed from fluorophores and antibodies chemically linked together. They will stain the cell by specifically binding to the epitope on the surface of the cell. You can quantify the staining by any of the various fluorescence methods. You can also stain microbiological biochemicals on the cell surface, such as flagella, pili, and carbohydrates using lectins or antibodies. These lectins are binding proteins that, like antibodies, bind to something, but what they bind to is a carbohydrate pattern. There are also more general stains, such as gram stain, that will light up the peptidoglycan and stain many different species generally. Another general use staining strategy is to combine cell permeable and impermeable dyes. In the Live Dead Backlight Kit, a live cell impermeable dye called propidium iodide is mixed with a cell permeable dye called cyto9. Only the dead cells will pick up the propidium iodine, but all cells get cyto9. Based on the ratio of the two dyes in the cell, you can tell if the cell is, is alive or not. That measurement is done by any of the various fluorescent methods, but most typically cytometry or microscopy. There are a number of things you should be careful about when performing biochemical assays that have quantitative readouts. Bacteria are different sizes at different stages of the growth phase. The process of replication, transcription, and translation all have different rates based on the phase of growth, the medium composition, and the genetic composition of your strain. Additionally, the growth conditions or your genetic modifications can differentially affect the growth of specific strains. These differences in cell physiology and growth rates can play havoc with your experiments. It is very easy to fool yourself into thinking that a genetic device is working when in reality it is an artifact of the growth conditions. 
it is tempting you to do extensive data manipulation to control the, for deviations in your experiment. There are many notable examples of scientists performing elaborate corrections to their data that make small differences in original signal look like, look like something far more dramatic. Such manipulation is highly discouraged since it is difficult to justify these corrections and they often misrepresent uh, the, the reader. Best practice is to normalize for cell density and for signal strength against the standard, but do nothing else to the data. This does not guarantee that your data will not lie to you, so be careful and be cautious in your conclusions.